You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's OBEHAVE with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Today, we're going to salute a special breed of dog. Now, this breed actually can come in different sizes and looks, but every single one of them possesses an amazing talent and trait, the desire to serve our country. Now, for decades and each and every day, Military working dogs have protected our troops. And you know what? They need our help now. My special guests today are making a difference to improve the lives of these four-footed military heroes. I want you to first pause and applause to Christy Walker Dober. She is an Army veteran who's now helping to create a much overdue National Military Dog Memorial. And we also have Lori Morton Fazell. She is Director of Animal Care, Education, and Compliance for Petco. Hey, ladies, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. All right. And the only rule, Christy, is that you never call me ma'am on the air. Is that correct? Can you handle that? I can handle that. (laughs) All right. We have lots to discuss. And listeners, you're going to find out how you can play a special part in saluting our military working dogs, past, present, and future. But we got to take a quick commercial break. So, everyone, attention. Let's sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave. We'll be right back. It's designerpetsweaters.com. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Now, for some, the month of September may symbolize the marching into fall, the multicolored leaves. But for many of us, September is special because it is National Service Dog Month. Now, service dogs incorporate a wide range. There are the dogs that help people that have hearing impairment or vision impairment. There are also specially trained dogs who help the military. And this is the branch I wish to salute today, the military working dogs. And here to share their story are my special guest, Army veteran Christy Walker Dober. And from Petco, we have Lori Morton Fazell. Now, I'm really glad, ladies, that you're both on the show, and I'm going to get started with you, Lori, first. Your fancy title at Petco is Director of Animal Care, Education, and Compliance. My gosh, that's a a mouthful. But in essence, what is your role? My role at Petco is to ensure that that animals always come first. My team and I, uh, we work on policies, procedures, training. Training is key in our stores, so we make sure that our associates are trained on the care of animals. We work with uh, regulatory agencies uh, to improve uh, standards in the pet industry. So if it has anything to do with an animal, I'm involved. As well as I like it. I like it. All right. And next up, we have Christy Walker-Dober, 
And she's giving that hyphen on purpose because she's a relatively a newlywed. And I want to first give you pause up for serving our country, Christy. I come from a family of military vets. The latest one, my brother, he served 20 years in the Navy. I know it wasn't in the Army, but he worked very nicely with the guys in the Army because he was a, a CB. And I want you to tell us a little bit about your military background so we can uh, get going with the show. Sure, sure. Um, well, I, I served in the military a long time ago. I was uh, active duty from 1990 to 95. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where my passion for military working dogs started. I served as a military police officer and then was introduced to the K-9 Corps in 91. And so I worked a dog for the United States Army MPs um, from 91 to 95. Nice. Then when I uh, stepped out of the Army, I worked at civilian law enforcement and worked a dog for about four years and then had a short break. And then I got involved back in the Army program about six years ago doing program-type management, budgeting, you know, getting the dogs what they need and the funding that they needed through Congress in order to sustain, you know, Army programs. And that's how I got involved in, in the National Monument. So it's been something that, you know, over 20 years I've really, you know, gone the full gamut from handler to, you know, program management and, and now to the monument. So it's, it's a passion that runs deep. For sure. Oh, yeah. I salute you for that. So let's get going. This is the reason, listeners, why we're on the show today. There's some amazing things that are happening in the month of September, and time is a ticking. So between now and September 22nd, I want you all to dash over to Petco, and there are going to be some of the donations, some amounts of money are going to go to service dog organizations. And so that I don't trip up and say the wrong thing, I'm going to have Lori come and take over. Let us know how we can help, how they can make a donation, and where's going, Lori. Thanks, Arden. Um, every September, we have a donation drive for our service dogs. And this September, we're excited to include our military dogs because they're very important to us. There's several ways that, that your listeners can contribute. Going into a Petco store and buying the bag of dog treats for natural balance. Part of the proceeds will go, or all the proceeds will go to the monument uh, that is being developed. They can also donate at the cash register. As they're checking out, though, the cashier will ask, would you like to donate? And the last way to donate is to go on to Petco.com, click on the store locator, and on the left margin, you'll see an icon for uh, the National Military Working Dog. So we're really getting behind this, and, and the hope is to raise a million dollars wow. to put forth this effort. So, and, and I know with your listeners and, and everybody out there that we can do it, uh, there's several ways to contribute. Thank you very much. I mean, that's not a wow, Lori. That's a bow wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, I want everybody after the show to also go to an interesting and vital website, and I want you to make sure... It's www.jbmf.s. Now, Christy, you're the military gal. Go through those acronyms as what they are so that, you know, what the initial stands for so we don't trip anybody's ears up. Absolutely. We joke all the time. I actually think there's there's people here in the District of Washington that probably get paid to create acronyms. Uh, <laughs> you would be surprised. Okay. Fortunate enough for me, my husband's military too, so we can talk in acronyms and our conversations are short and sweet. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, JBMF uh, stands for the John Burnham Monument Foundation. John Burnham is the founder um, and president, and uh, this is really, you know, his dream, you know, that he ha- has done an extreme amount of work on this on his own, and it started when he published his first book called Dog Tags of Courage, and after he told his story in Vietnam and what his dog the relationship that him and his dog had and how, you know, he survived Vietnam because of his dog, he decided that that was it. It was time to to honor all dogs, you know, from World War II to present. And so when he went through, started going through the process, they needed a name of a foundation in order to make it non-for-profit. And so who better than the man who uh, started the dream? So JBMF is John Burnham Monument Foundation. And the common acronym that you'll hear me use often is MWD, which is Military Working Dog. So when, uh, you know, people refer to them across the Department of Defense, they keep it short and sweet, and they call them MWDs. You're not a chatty Cathy, I guess. That's kind of funny. I like that. I can just say, instead of pass the butter, you what would you do, PTB to your husband at, the, Absolutely. at breakfast? Absolutely. If, if need be. <laughs> Absolutely. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's talk it, it's about kind the... of like verbally texting. Yeah, you know, I know. Like, like all the you know all the short acronyms you know that you use when in text messages. You know, the Department of Defense has its own language in so that respect. <laughs> if you came back as a dog, you surely won't be a terrier or a chihuahua. I can guarantee that, will you? Absolutely you're, you're not. You're not a yappy. No. German Shepherd all the way. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. The other website I hope everybody will go to is the one from the sculptor, the Paula Slater. And that's paulaslater.com. And if you can, folks, she's showing you how she's creating this special military working dog monument. And if you could talk to us about where it's going to be, when it's going to be, and what we can do to get this this puppy up and ready to have people to visit. Absolutely. Um, but I would be remiss if I did not put a huge shout out to uh, Petco and Natural Balance Pet Foods. Um, okay. We have been trying to privately raise donations on this monument for some time. It is the generosity and the passion of Petco and Natural Balance that are making this possible. You know, they really um, have stepped up and joined us in our fight and our passion to get this monument built. So without them and their efforts, it would not be possible. So a big shout out to Petco and Natural Balance Pet Foods. Woof, woof, um, woof. You know. We're doing a woof. We're doing a woof, woof. What do you think, Lori? My woof needs a I love it. Thank you. No, that's great. <laughs> Um, All right, so the, describe this monument, where it's going to be, and a little bit about the sculptor, Paula. Okay, well, the monument is going to uh, be at Lackland uh, Air Force Base, Texas. And that is, has uh, received a lot of cheers from the Department of Defense because Lackland Air Force Base is the home of the military working dogs. So all dogs are trained for all four services at Lackland Air Force Base. Oh, I did um, not yeah, all dogs and all handlers are trained there, so it's, it couldn't be a more of a fitting place uh, for that monument to be built. We anticipate the dedication in October of 2013, so we are just at 13 months or so um, before we do the dedication of that monument in Lackland. The monument, um, as you said, is being sculpted by Paula. As you look at her website, just to see the process and the things that she's doing is just utterly breathtaking. You cannot look at those pieces and, and not feel like the handler and the dogs are coming to life. I mean, she's just absolutely amazing. She is a sculptor um, out of California and has really just done an amazing job. The monument will have a single handler that is over 10 and a half feet tall, and he will be sur- the handler will be surrounded by four dogs, and those four dogs are significant. It will have a German Shepherd, Malinois, a Labrador Retriever, and a Doberman Pinscher. And the reason why those breeds are selected is because through history, those are the four dogs that have supported the different conflicts from World War II to present. So we've really tried to capture each breed that historically has supported wars from World War II to now, and um, and that's why those four breeds are being represented. And those dogs are one and a half times normal size. So I told Paula I wanted some to put on either end of my driveway instead of lions. <laughs> I wanted, you know, two German shepherds at the end of, and put on the end of my driveway with a gate. So they're absolutely just breathtaking. Yeah, and these are ones that never need to be house trained either. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Or brushed yeah. or combed or fed yeah. or yeah. Yeah, yeah. always yeah. listen. <laughs> always saluting, always in a good attention pose. Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> so... Uh, let's go back to you, Lori. You mentioned how people can make donations. You do a lot for service dogs in general, but this is kind of a, a special cause for a Petco, it sounds like, with the military dogs. It is. Our, this is the first time in U.S. history that the U.S. Congress has elevated an animal, a dog, to a national monument status. Wow. Um, I was surprised when I learned that, and that's why Natural Balance and Petco are such strong supporters of this initiative, because it seems that sometimes those animals get lost, and they shouldn't. They're heroes. Whether they're a service dog or a military dog, those animals are heroes. Another important fact is the legislation. Natural Balance and Petco are proud to support the canine members of the Armed Forces Act, and amazingly enough, these animals currently are considered equipment and wait, wait we got to pause on that one because equipment are you serious they're not a canteen yeah. are they no they're not okay so what's being done to maybe change that to make them soldiers and true military members well the the act is being sponsored by senator richard blumenthal mm-hmm. and it's supported by the aspca uh, military working dog adoptions natural balance and petco and we feel very strongly because we want, instead of them being equipment, because all of this and all of your listeners know 
they are not equipment. We want them to be recognized as members of the armed forces and also extend certain benefits to them when they retire. You know, when a military dog retires, we want that to be included, that they have a place to go, that they can be decorated as a military officer if they've, you know, been killed in action or performed uh, courageous acts while in service. So this is an important bill. There is a website. It's www.govtrack.us backslash Congress backslash bills backslash 112 slash S2134. And that's where your your listeners can get involved. They can sign a petition to get the military dogs as a status. Get them status in the military because they deserve that. So yes. that's a very strong initiative as well as raising money for the monument. All right. Hey, listeners, we're going to repeat that website again because it's a doozy of one. But Lori does such a good job at it. She's already done it once. We're going to have her do it again later on the show. But right now, I want all of you to just sit and stay. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Looking for the best advice on pet health, safety, and travel? Connect with the Pet Lady. Dana Humphrey, also known as the Pet Lady, will surely be in a city near you real soon. She will be spreading the good news for pets and pet lovers from tips on dog and cat care, pet industry trends, and the best events for you and your four-legged family members. Need a great gift idea or insights on the hottest pet gadgets? Simply follow the Pet Lady on Twitter at Pet Lady World. You can also learn more at the Pet Lady at thepetlady.net. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey y'all, it's Kelly Pickler, and you're listening to Arden Moore on All Behave on Pet Life Radio. I love y'all. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Obehave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the Obehave show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I am really stoked to have these two women on the show. Christy Walker Dober. She is an Army vet who has done many things for military working dogs, and her job is quite not done. She's doing even more. We also have Lori Morton Bazell. She's with Petco. And we've got two dog-dedicated gals on the air right now. And, Christy, you have done everything from working with dogs in the Army. And you said that you were a police officer. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, the training of these military dogs. You know, you mentioned the four breeds earlier on the air, ideal military working dogs for any of the four branches. But what are some of the special traits you're looking for that may make this dog a true military dog? You know, well, you know, currently the biggest thing that they look for when they evaluate dogs, um, you know, when the Department of Defense evaluates dogs for purchase is their willingness to work, their willingness to what they call their prey drive, you know, their willingness to, you know, want to search or want to please whoever the handler is. And that's probably, you know, the most important piece. Everyone will say you can, you know, you can train a dog to do anything, but the dog has to be willing to be trained. And so that's, you know, that's what they look for most when they're selecting puppies or, you know, when they're going out, you know, and looking at different breeders that are soliciting to sell dogs to the Department of Defense. It's got to be a dog that's willing to work. So we've seen some change over the years. Before the Gulf War um, in the 90s, German Shepherds were the primary breed used by the Department of Defense. They switched to Belgian Malinois because the Belgian Malinois had less problems with hip dysplasia. They acclimated to the weather changes better. They seem to have a higher drive to work harder, a little bit longer. So then they incorporated the Belgian Malinois. And now um, the shift with the current conflicts in Afghanistan, you see a majority of Labrador retrievers, but then you also see dogs like Springer Spaniels or 
you know, some of the other hunting breeds that, that we're not used to seeing uh, just because of the new demands um, and the things that these dogs are being trained to do overseas. But every one of them, all the way from the beagles that are used in the Navy to search ships, all the way up to the Irish setter or Springer Spaniels, all these dogs, all they want to do is work and please their handler for just a little bit of love and affection. So that is what they look for most. What type of dog did you have when you were in the Army? And tell us a little bit about your relationship with your dog. I had two different dogs when I was in. I had a German Shepherd who at that time was a patrol dog, which is just basic law enforcement. So his job was to search out for, you know, people in unsecured buildings. And, you know, he was trained for attack work and and some other things. So I started out with a German Shepherd and he's what taught me how to be a handler. You know, they you have to start with your basic handling skills. If you can't have a dog uh, that's only trained on one task and be responsible enough to train him to the best of his ability, the Army didn't used to let you go to, say, the next phase. And then I had a Belgian Malinois um, named John, who was a narcotics detection dog. And um, he was absolutely just amazing. I spent as much time with him as, as I possibly could. And what's interesting is when you build that bond, you don't want to go home without him. You know, yeah. you spend more time at the kennels than, than you do at home because, uh, you know, it's fun. You know, it's not work. You know, it, it's you have- fun to be with them. It's fun to train them. It's fun to work them. So he was absolutely, um, absolutely amazing. And uh, through the years, I've actually run into a handler or two that handled him after I separated from the service. So really? It was always nice to see that he lived a, a really great life and had some great handlers. So, you know, it's nice to hear. Well, I salute John. And what was the name of your German Shepherd dog? Ronnie. All right. That sounds great. Now, do you have any four-leggers in your life now? No, actually, I, I do not. I have looked at, um, you know, adopting a military working dog, of course. And we've looked at it, but we do so much traveling. You know, my husband is still active duty. Um, I do a lot of traveling uh, for the monument, and I have a 10-year-old. So um, it's all (laughs) I can until we get this monument in place. But there's a few German Shepherd puppies in the neighborhood, and if they ever come up missing, my place should be the first they check. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I don't know. If I was a dog and I ran into you, Christy, I think I would salute you. Don't you think you have this you have this energy you give out that they're like, oh, I can't get away with anything. This lady knows D-O-Gs, don't you think? Absolutely. Um, every time a friend of mine or a family member gets a puppy, I'm the first one they call for training tips. And I can't keep my mouth shut. As a matter of fact, every time I go into, you know, a Petco or, <laughs> you know, any other local neighborhood pet store, you know, just to, you know, go in and check things out, I can't help but answer training questions and you know, things like that, as if I work there. So, yeah, definitely. I pick all the dogs up and sit down and pet them and, you know, talk to them, give advice. It's definitely uh, runs deep in the veins, for sure. That sounds great. And, Lori, you're from Petco, but what's your pet connection? You got any four-leggers? I do. I have two. I have an Air Doodle. Air Doodle. Okay. What's the name? Pogo. Pogo? And he is like a pogo stick. And then I have a Chihuahua Terrier. I never thought I would have a (laughs) Chihuahua. (laughs) <laughs> and this dog adopted me, of course. Uh, I spent 23 years in animal welfare, so uh, all of my animals have come from, from shelters, and they're great dogs. I just I just love them. They keep me in line. And so we got Pogo, the Air Doodle, and the Chihuahua Terrier is named? Skittles. Skittles. Okay. <laughs> and what's their personality besides bouncing up and down, Pogo? Well, you know, Pogo is very loyal. He's, you know, he, he, he actually guards. I mean, he'll lay at the front door. And see if anybody's going to come in. Of course, he's got the big, robust bark. Same thing outside at the gate. He faces the gate. He'll lay just to protect the family. The Chihuahua Terrier, not so much. He kind of just barks at anything. But he runs the family. He runs Pogo. He's in charge. If Pogo tries to, you know, come up to near the couch, he's like, nope, this is mine. So uh, they've worked out their dominance issues. One, one is above the other always. So, and then I have an 11 year old. So you toss that in and. Uh, 11-year-old two-legger, right? A son or a daughter? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, son, okay. son. And he has a room full of reptiles. So we're not short on animals. We've got uh, many, many in our home. I don't know. If I was Skittles and Pogo, I would be, like, so happy. My mommy works at Petco, baby. Take that. <laughs> I get in. I got, like, MVP status. I mean, do they go with you to Petco sometime and sniff the different aisles? Absolutely. They love to go shopping at Petco. Um, they will pick out their treats and they can tell when I come home from work, you know, they'll, they'll get that scent and there's like, okay, where's my treat? What did you buy me today? 
So uh, they are very spoiled. That's okay. It's a good spoil. You know, listeners, we're speaking to Christy Walker Dober and Lori Morton Fazell. Christy is with the website jbmf.us. And again, Christy, tell us what that stands for, and let's talk about how people can help out with the upcoming unveiling, finally, of the Military Working Dog Monument. It stands for the John Burnham Monument Foundation. Um, It's named after the founder and president of our board. So the website and the foundation carries his name uh, for his dedication to this cause. You can go to our website, jbmf.us, and follow the links. You can make uh, donations right there on our website. We also have a store where you can purchase uh, hats, T-shirts, and even resin or bronze models for your home of the monument. And one of my main jobs on the board is, you know, I am serve as the secretary and as the promotions lead. So if there is anyone out there in the show that would like to do a fundraiser in their neighborhood for JBMF uh, to go to make a contribution to the monument, all they have to do is send me an email. And But we really would like to see uh, the public get as involved as possible. So anyone can do a fundraiser. Anyone can raise money. And uh, we just ask that they contact us first. And then I can give them some pointers and, and talk them through a process and give them some ideas, you know, and just spread the word, let everyone know. But right now, the easiest thing that everyone can do is go to Petco and buy the natural balanced jerky treats with the monument on front. Whether they have a dog or not, it's a great way to just, you know, run in, grab some jerky treats and and support the monument. It's uh, quick, fast and easy. All right. Thank you very much. And Lori, let's add to the Petco. I walk into Petco with Chipper and Cleo and they're sniffing out the aisles All right, I got the jerky treats. What's next? What can we do and where can we do it online as well? Well, you can go into any Petco store or Unleashed by Petco and make a donation right at the cash register. The cashier will ask you if you'd like to support. We have a nice little sign there. And those donations will go for the monument. You can also go on www.petco.com. Click on the store locator, and in the left margin, you'll see an icon there for the military dogs. And you can click on that and make donations there as well. And we're glad to support as well as Natural Balance. You know, we're excited for this because it's long overdue. And this is a way that all of us can contribute to get this monument up at Lackland. So several ways to support. You know, walk into that Petco store and we'll direct you to the to those treats and get you uh, donating at the register. And then we also can go to jbmf.us and look up Christy and she'll help you out on how you can make a donation or create a special event in your community to help towards paying for this well overdue monument for our dogs. And before we go, Lori, you're not only doing this, you're putting a little meat behind some legislation too to finally, finally get some good status and good benefits for military working dogs. And we we warned you listeners, there's a doozy of a website, but Lori's going to be able to shout it out one more time. I want you to check it out, work with your local lawmakers, and let's get our dogs in the military no longer regarded as equipment. Take it away, Lori. www.govtrack.us backslash congress backslash bills backslash 112 backslash S2134. Shoot. Click on that. Follow the bill. It's being sponsored by um, the Senator uh, Blumenthal. And this is something that Petco, Natural Balance, ASPCA, and the Military Working Dog Adoption Groups are really, really behind. Yeah, we're supporting that legislation and going hand-in-hand with Natural Balance because we need to classify these dogs as actual service puppies uh, instead of equipment. And, And this is a way that we can all help and get that done. All right. We've got uh, Veterans Day in just a couple months. Before we say goodbye, Christy, what's the final message you'd like to share with our, our listeners about military working dogs? You know, I've been thinking about that. It's like, you know, what can I say about military working dogs in this long overdue monument? 
I think in the last year and a half since um, I've been placed on the board, the most amazing thing to me is the history of military working dogs. And you can find it throughout the Internet. You can find it in different, you know, Discovery Channel or, or history shows. And I really encourage people to get involved. I don't know if the, if the American public understands that these dogs have made selfless sacrifice since World War II to now and saved thousands of American lives. And it is so important that they understand the role that these dogs play in morale, that they play in life-saving, and that all these dogs do is work for a pat on the head, a ball, a treat, and just the love of affection of their handler. It is just amazing uh, what they are capable of doing, what they do, and the countless lives that they have saved. So this monument really is for them and the handlers that work them because we will have a long legacy, uh, not just past, but, but in the future as well. Well, I'm marking and, uh, my calendar for October 2013 because I think San Antonio is a spot I need to go to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, I was just sitting here and I, it reminded me of a story. When I went in to become a handler, our first day in school at Lackland Air Force Base, and there was about 15 of us in the class, they told us, you know, went through the basic health care and maintenance of these dogs and what we would be responsible for. And they released us from class that evening and said, go out and buy as many dog treats as you think that you'll need. <laughs> and we did. And we went out and we picked treats off the shelves and we found, you know, whatever it is that we thought the dogs were going to like milk bones and, you know, build jack or special cuts or beef jerky, sausages, you name it. You know, we went out, all of us did. When we came into class the next morning, they sat us down and said, Pick the treat that you think your dog's going to like the best out of all the ones we had on our desk, and we did. Then they made us eat them oh. um, and said, if you like the taste of it, feed it to your dog. If you don't like the taste of them, throw them in the trash. So I will tell you that milk bones were a common favorite and sausages were not. So I think I'm going to have to go out to the local Petco Unleashed, which is just a few miles from me, and buy a bag of those treats and try them myself. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the, the jerky treats. That was a smart instructor. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of that story, Lori? <laughs> I love it. That's great because, you know, if you're going to feed it to your dog, you should be able to eat it. That's great. I'll have to try those jerky bar treats too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Hey, let's all go out for dinner on me. Turkey <laughs> treats on me. Hey, Lori, before we say goodbye to you too, what's the message you want to give to our listeners from Petco's perspective about the monument and other things that you're doing? This is, this is, this is an annual fundraiser. We, we support guard, guide dogs and military working dogs. And this is a chance for you to get involved, your listeners to get involved, to really help those military working dogs. We need this monument. It is so overdue. And, we're going to raise that million dollars. It's going to happen. I know it. I feel it. Uh, we've got fantastic customers that are willing to contribute. Even, you know, 50 cents, whatever you can afford will help the military working dogs. And if you buy the, and the limited, uh, the jerky treats are limited edition. They're right. only out for this fundraiser. So not only are you giving your dog a healthy product, you're supporting other dogs. And it's just, it's a pleasure to do this work. It really is. I mean, helping animals. I mean, what a, what a great job do I have? I mean, supporting animals and, and helping them through Petco and, and Natural Balance. So visit your Petco, go to the .com site, and uh, please support. All right. I've been honored to have both Christy Walker Dober on the show, with, along with Lori Morton Fazell. And folks, you heard, you got the orders. So let's go out and support these military working dogs. And 2013 in October, plan your vacation and get over to San Antonio and go to that Air Force Base and salute that monument to those dogs that have been there for our soldiers and all the members of the military since World War II. So I also at this time want to give a big salute to our producer, Mark Winter. He is the genius behind this show and all the shows on Pet Life Radio, and there are a lot of them. So please dash over to PetLifeRadio.com. And until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. 
all behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>